Hello, hello again. All right, so I decided since my last video didn't really say much about the military, I decided to make a little video about you know, what you can expect joining the military, um, at least in terms of training, AIT, trade -off specifically. Because uh, I know when I joined, I had a few questions, and uh, well, no one was really there to answer. I had my recruiter there to help me answer some questions, but as to what to expect, and uh, what I want, you know, what I kind of wanted to know about what it was going to be like, I didn't really have anyone there to, you know, kind of tell me. So basically, this is going to be dedicated to just, you know, the military and what to expect. So when you first join, you know, you have your process at MEPS. Um, you do your ASVAB, you do all that, you do your physical, you get everything checked out. But once you get your, once you sign your contract and you're, you know, pretty much set and joining and you already have a date to go, um, you know, getting off that plane, you're waiting for your, you know, you're waiting with a bunch of, with a bunch of people waiting for your sergeant to come, uh, or a sergeant to come pick you up. Um, when I went, I was there, I had my basic at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, um, and at the airport, got to meet a bunch of people. In fact who's over there but um uh, first thing you're gonna do is uh well my experience personally when i got to the airport in atlanta um, they told us to meet by clock tower at like i don't know 1300 and they said just wait for the sergeant they didn't come pick us up until 2200 that night, about, it was late. So we basically all sat around doing absolutely nothing, being told to wait. Um, the first part of the military is just going to be all hurry up and wait. Um, after we picked up, we drove over to uh, Columbus, uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, um, in which the first week is probably the worst week of basic training. It's your in-processing, it's your reception. Um, at Fort Benning, it's uh, 30th AG. You're basically there. You're getting your shots. You're getting all your, getting issued all your military, you know, gear, your uniform. Um, you get your duffel bags, uh, but it's a lot of waiting, a lot of lines, a lot of waiting, and more waiting. Um, it is. If you ask most people out here right now, I'm in. A, I'm at AIT Fort Gordon. I think I said that earlier. But a lot of people, if you ask them here, what was the worst part about basic? It's reception. It, it is by far the worst part. Um, after your reception, then um, you know you kind of get used to at least waiting. Hopefully, um, you then get picked up by your sergeants um, at the end of that week, and uh, you will be headed to your company. Um, I was at Alpha 247, 4th Platoon. It was fun. Um, drill sergeants, you know, when you get off the bus, you get that shark attack, which all the drill sergeants, I, and I guarantee you there were some drill sergeants there from different companies. They all just kind of lined up and they're just yelling at you to hurry up, move faster, you got your duffel bags on you, it's heavy. Um, telling you to run, stop walking, so you get to where you need to go. Um, our experience, um, they made us hold our duffel bags over our heads. And then they tell us to throw it down, and then you pick it back up, hold them up, put them down, hold them up, put them down, etc. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the whole first day I was kind of smiling the entire time because it's kind of what I expected for the military. I kind of expected like you know like an in-your-face, full-on immersion, full physical training. Um, I get, I went in with the uh, idea of putting in 150 percent so I can come out with something better because and all in all like when you join and you do your training and all that you're only gonna get out what you put in. Um, so it was it was kind of fun at first. Um, the first 72 hours are when the drill sergeants are really on you, um, but they're going to be on you the entire time. But the first 72 is when it gets really bad. Uh, basic training split up into three phases. you got your red phase, your white phase, and your blue phase. Your red phase is going to have all your uh, introductory stuff. Um, you're going to start off with a financial brief probably. Um, sharp briefs, sharp briefs all day, every day. No, not, all, not every day, but pretty much every time you uh, enter a new phase, you're going to have a sharp brief. Or at least when you enter and leave. Um, basic training, you're going to have a sharp brief. Um, what else is there? Uh, we did obstacle course, you do a team building course. Um, you, there's a lot of things at basic that are a lot of fun. Um, you, you 
you get to meet a lot of people. Like I'm from California. I didn't really travel outside of California much aside from the military. So when I got here, uh, you got to meet a lot of people from different areas. Uh, you get to see their lifestyles a little different. Um, for me, it was a little different going through basic because I am 26 years old. A lot of people that went through basic, or at least the people that I went with, were 18, 19, 20 years old. So I was a little bit older. There were a couple of people that were like 30, 32, 34. Um, but it depends on what you are expecting to get out of it or expecting to go into. Like I already knew right off the bat when I joined that I was going to be with a bunch of 18 to 20 year olds. Um, and I personally have a very uh, low tolerance for stupidity and immaturity. Although I can act pretty stupid and immature at times as well. But um, generally speaking, um, it bugs me a little. I mean, we all used to be that way, but when you grow up, you know, get older, you, uh, you expect people to act more mature, but it doesn't always work out that way. Um, so red phase is pretty much uh, learning to work as a team. You and your platoon, your guys are gonna hate each other. There's gonna be people from all over, um, different lifestyles, different habits. You guys are going to hate each other. Um, but basically, you wake up every morning, five o'clock, zero, four thirty, whatever it is, morning PT, which isn't too bad. Um, I was at Fort Benning, we were in an area called Sand Hill, so it was just a lot of sand everywhere. We did PT in a giant sandbox, like a really large sandbox. Um, I miss it, I really do, um, but it's team building. Drill sergeants are going to throw things at you to make you guys work as a team. Um, easiest way to put it, the quicker you guys work as a team, the more lax they are with you. Um, unfortunately, our platoon never got to work as a team, um, in fact, I think we hated each other more than anything by the time we were done. Um, uh, once you finish with red phase, it goes three weeks of red phase, three weeks of white phase, and three-ish weeks of blue phase. Um, some some basic trainings are a little different. Um, I talked to a few buddies here, and they had to experience like six weeks of red phase because they were just poor attitudes, to say the least. But if all goes well, you have three weeks of red phase, and then when you get to white phase, that's when you get into your RM, your rifling. Um, it's it's fun. I like shooting. I personally like shooting, so that was fun. Um, it the worst part about white phase and the um, going to the range was you know you have an entire company going. Um, you have all four platoons. At least in mine was four platoons. Approximately 50 people in each platoon, so that's 200 soldiers. You go out to the range, you spend all day out there, but you only spend like 20, 30 minutes shooting. So it's a lot of waiting. Um, you're out there, and I went in the middle of summer, so it was hot. Um, but uh, I like shooting, so that was that was fun. I, I enjoyed it a lot. You got to, um, uh, we used M16s with iron sights. Some companies here are using the M4s uh, with red dot optics, but uh, I got to at least qualify with uh, M16 iron sights, which is good because then, you know, if you are relying on optics and they go down on you and they don't work anymore, well, you better learn how to shoot with your iron sights. Um, after white phase, you get into blue phase. Um, that's when you do a little more tactical things. Um, you know, learn how to clear buildings, uh, shoot behind barriers. Um, it actually wasn't too bad because it's only like two weeks of that. Your last week is a recovery week at Blue Phase. Um, you kind of just sit around and clean your rifles all day. Actually, that's exactly what we did. We cleaned all day. Um, you're either cleaning the barracks, you're cleaning your weapons. Uh, you make sure everything looks good for the next group to come, basically. Um, Throughout basic though, you'll have a couple of, um, a couple of ruck marches. They are mandatory. Uh, they say they're mandatory. There was this one guy that graduated, not even completing a final ruck march, but that was kind of a, a vote with the uh, the soldiers. So they are mandatory. Um, they start off pretty easy on you guys, and then it gets uh, further and harder and heavier. Um, it's not too bad though. Uh, Fort Benning has a, a notorious uh, stairway to heaven. It's just a really steep hill. It goes up and then down and then up, really steep. So you get tired really quick. Um, my legs were done. Yeah, I was getting blisters like nonstop. Make sure when you get your boots in reception, um, to make sure they fit. If they don't fit, tell them, hey, these don't fit. These don't feel right. They're too loose. Tell them that. Um, if 
they're nice enough, maybe they'll give you new ones, maybe. Um, but that's very important because my feet were, a lot of people, they're just blisters, it's, you gotta take care of your body. Um, another big thing is, um, uh, what is it, um, sick call. You'll hear mixed stories about this. Um, they'll say never go to sick call. They'll put you on profile, and you put you on profile, then you basically aren't getting out. You're not gonna be able to do anything. You're not gonna get out, which is for the most part true. But if you are hurting, get it checked out because what could be something minor and easy to fix, like well, let's say you got like um, oh the biggest ones are hip and back injuries. You don't those are generally pretty bad. But you know if you have a you have an ache somewhere, um, obviously don't go for just, you know, small little things like, oh, my finger hurts, or oh, my toe hurts. Um, if things are serious where you can't do work, or you can't walk, or you can't run, then you should probably get it checked out. Um, sometimes stress factors turn into bigger things, and then worse things, and then you, next thing you know, you can't do anything. So, um, take care of your body. Uh, get it checked out if you can. Um... That was basic. Graduation family day was fun. Uh, I got to see my family after nine weeks. Um, they they take, depending on where you go, they take away your cell phones the entire time. Um, they may give it back special occasions, like we had um, at 30th, I, it was Mother's Day. They gave back um, our cell phones for, for like an hour for Mother's Day. Um, there are a couple times uh, when you do something really good during basic, you and your platoon do something really good, the drill sergeants may give you back your cell phones. It's all discretionary based. It's all, you know, if they want to or not, they don't have to. Um, but, you know, their drill sergeants are people too. They like to reward you if you do well, um, punish you if you don't. Uh, but just keep in mind, you're never going to get away from PT. You're never going to get away from getting smoked, or as they would say, PRT form assessed. Um, after basic training, um, actually let me rewind back a bit. Um, one of the things that helped me throughout basic training is um, letters. Uh, have your family write you letters, you know, it's something to look forward to every week. And church. I am not a very religious person. In fact, um, I kind of say I'm not religious at all, uh, except for the fact I do believe in the Buddhist concept. But aside from that, I'm not very religious. While you're at basic training, find a church to go to. Um, Pretty much, I was Jewish for the entire for the entirety of basic. Um, I think it was mostly because they gave me free bagels. <laughs> like at basic training, you're very restricted. I mean, you get three meals a day. You get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, but sometimes you're just hungry. You still want some more food, and you can't have anything else. Yeah, I got bagels and cream cheese every Sunday. I was happy. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, find a religion. Write letters. Have your, have your friends, family, grandparents, what have you, send you letters. Um, it helps. It helps. You won't get any letters during red face. Uh, um, they actually hold your mail during red face. I don't expect to get anything during the first three weeks. After that, then they'll start doing mail call regularly, probably every week. Uh, and it's quite, it's quite fun. You're sitting there, you're waiting for your letters, they call your name. Um, our drill sergeants were pretty funny. They, uh, they would make it a game. They would try to hit you with your letters, um, and they would throw them probably as hard as I could try to hit you with your letters. Um, all in all, basic was, uh, it was fun. It really was. Um, at the time, I hated it. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely hated it. Did not know what to expect. I hated the people. Um, but looking back now, um, I'm at my 18th, 17th week here at Fort Gord, my AIT. I, I kind of miss basic a bit. Um, it was a lot more strict, a lot more disciplined than here, and I say discipline just because the individuals that go to basic, um, they've got a drill sergeant on their neck, down their neck, breathing down their neck every minute of the day. Like from the moment you wake up in the morning to your PT, to chow, um, at all points in time you have a drill sergeant there. So you know you get people to act squared away. Um, and then here, at AIT, you know, they give you more freedoms, they expect you to be able to do the right thing, you know, integrity, you know, live by the army values. But, unfortunately, not everyone has the discipline. So you'll see a lot of people revert back to how they used to be in their civilian life. That's the hardest part about AIT, is dealing with the people here. Um, 
in terms of the training and the schooling here, I mean, it's not too bad. It's fun. I like it here. There's a lot more freedoms. Like right now, let's see here. Let's see if I can do this. Nope. All right. Um, I'm outside my barracks. That's what it looks like. Call. Um, I've got the uh, defac right in front of me, which is your chow hall. Um, yeah, people waiting. Oh, see. I don't know if you saw that, but there's a person walking by himself. Don't do that. You gotta do the right thing. Um, at basic training, they teach you things and they expect you to continue with those teachings. Um, try not to revert back. Uh, my best advice for everybody is keep your military bearings as long as humanly possible. I mean, there are going to be your little viruses within your formations and your classes and uh, groups of people that try to suck you into doing the wrong thing. Do the right thing. That's the only advice I can give anybody here. I tell all the new classes that come in, all the new people, keep your bearings as long as you can because it's going to go a long way. I mean, I'm National Guard. I'm going back home. I'm not regular Army, so or active Army, rather. Um, so, I, I don't know. Uh, let's do a quick walk around here. Oh. So this is our defac. This is um, Fort Gordon, Georgia. Um, signal Towers right there. We, Fort Gordon generally houses the 25 series, the combo series. There are 94 Echoes here. They are cybersecurity, I believe. Um, but uh, you'll get your 25 uniforms, your Sierras, your Bravos, your... Oh, man, there's a formation going on. <laughs> um, but uh, you get your Limas. I did hear that they may be merging a lot of the MOSs, the 25 series. So... It's going to be interesting to see how that goes out. Um, I've got a couple buddies that are in the uh, uh, 25 Bravos. I'm going to see if I can get this formation. All right, here we go. So, it is a weekend. It is Saturday. Um, so, for the Phase 4s that are here, they have formation every two hours, starting at 0800. This right here is... Phase fives. It's zero. It's a what is it? Nine o'clock, and then um, a couple formations after that for Delta Company. Um, they're looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay, I leave here. I'm gonna show you some of the more soldiers here. Boom. So you can tell which ones have their bearings, the ones that are standing there, position of attention, they're doing well. And uh, you can see the ones that are just kind of moving around in the back, they don't really care. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to see if I can get another video in maybe later today about uh, life at AIT. But for the most part, for, for basic training, um, all in all, it was fun. It really was. It's just, it's a new lifestyle. Like me, back at home, I love sleeping in. I can, I mean, I usually work swing shifts, so I wake, I go to work until like 1 a.m. I come home and I sleep all day. Um, basic training really got me out of that mentality, uh, for the most part, just because um, I had to wake up what zero four thirty just to get ready you got to shave every day you got to make sure you're, you're good to go yeah, I'm good <laughs> I could probably shave again but um yeah, it's, they teach you a whole new lifestyle basically so if you like waking up early in the morning you'll be fine if you don't like waking up early in the morning you start getting used to it and do PT push-ups sit-ups uh, when I first got here uh, well basic training my Oh, my, uh, I wasn't as in shape as I thought I was. I really thought I was in shape. But uh, they'll do an assessment, two minutes of push-ups, two minutes of sit-ups, and a two-mile run. Uh, when I first started basic training, my two-mile run was 17.25, which was really bad. It's really bad. Um, right now, it's at a 14.06, which is pretty good. Um, work on your run. Make sure you're running. If you're not running, start running. If you're not doing push-ups or sit-ups, start doing push-ups or sit-ups. Um, basic training, yeah, it helps you get in shape, but you should probably be in shape before you go in.
because at 30th, um, or at reception rather, they do an assessment on you. Um, and if you fail the assessment, you would be put in their FTU program. And their FTU is nicknamed their Fat Camp, but it works for those that are, you know, not in shape, skinny as well, aren't strong enough. But you will be stuck there until you finish. There was, uh, there's one soldier here. Um, I went to 30 with him, but he got here um, to AIT probably six, six weeks after I got here, five weeks after I got here, because he was stuck at FTU. Um, you don't want to be that person. You know, make sure you're in shape, um, and everything will be good. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna go back to my room. Right now it is zero nine ten. My first formation isn't until 1200, but that's because I'm a phase five plus. I've been here, I've done all the right things. Um, so I'm gonna relax for a bit. But um, yeah, catch you guys later. Peace.